Hello everyone and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked and today we are finally going to learn how to create decent results starting from videos. I say decent because I'm sure that in the future I'll find other methods to do even better. And as soon as it happens, you'll be the first to know, I promise. I also take advantage of this tutorial to explain a bit about how Animate Diff works, a node that is famous in the field of animation with stable diffusion. Uh, personally, I don't use the basic version of the node, even though it works very well. Uh, instead, I use the version called Animate Diff Evolved, which supports a technique called Sliding Context Window. In simple terms, it allows us to use only the latest images from a larger set for generating an animation. Because normally reaching a certain number of analyzed images would force us to stop, resulting in very short videos unless you have an excessive amount of VRAM. In conjunction with Animate Diff Evolved, we need to use Comfy UI Advanced Control Net created by the same author for the same reason since the official control mat node uh, does not support the sliding context window. Does this mean we can create infinite animations without batching smaller sizes? Well, it depends. From all the tests I've done, if we use multiple control net nodes in our workflow, even with the version I just mentioned, you will almost certainly end up reaching the limit of your VRAM. However, if you use the Animate Diff node and only one Control Net node, to my surprise, I've seen that I can reach huge batch sizes without any difficulty, except for the obvious processing slowness of various frames in the case sampler. Uh, the VRAM saturates, but it never goes beyond the maximum limit, indicating that the sliding context window works well. I will leave the links to the nodes I just mentioned and all the ones needed for today's workflow in the description. All right, let's proceed with our workflow. Since the workflow is moderately complex and creating it from scratch would probably just make you fall asleep. This time I'll explain everything starting from a project I created earlier. Firstly, as you can see, I used the video from last time downloaded for free from Vidivo, reducing the frame rate to a quarter and adapting the resolution so that the height is at most 512 pixels this time I won't use any batch size and I'll leave images limit at zero so that the video is processed in its entirety and in a single large batch. So here, as you can see, I've set up an LCM flow with Animate Diff and Control Net and the model I'm using, you already know, is Minimix to which I've attached the clip set last layer node set to negative two as suggested by the author. Right after we have the LoRa of LCM, which I've already explained in the previous video. And finally, our beloved Animate Diff. As I mentioned, the technology behind this node is quite complex and involves modifying the base model so that it can undergo other models trained to allow a very high coherence between frames in the final video. But not only that, Animate Diff allows the creation of real animations from scratch without starting from an actual video, but by following what is told in the prompt. I'll make another video about this soon. Animate Diff, just like ControlNet, has its own models divided into two categories. The base and mandatory models that are divided into those working with SDXL and those for previous models, and that handle the coherence between frames and the interpretation of the prompt. The motion LoRa models, which are optional, they handle the creation of basic animations like pan, zoom, etc. As you can see from this example, you can download them from the usual hugging face. And you'll find all the links in the how to use section of Animate Diff Evolved GitHub. After downloading them, you need to put them in the respective models and motion LoRa folders inside the node folder.
Returning to the workflow, the main node of animate diff is definitely the loader where you'll choose your main model. For this workflow, I decided to use the temporal net model, and then we have the section to choose the beta schedule, where we'll practically always choose this for models 1.5 and linear animated if SDXL or Hotshot XL when we use models based on SDXL technology in our load checkpoint. Uh, next is the motion scale, which is simply the impact of animations on the final result. Finally, since the animated if models also exist in version 2, we have the option to enable support for them through this toggle. You'll notice that you're using a version 2 model, usually from its description. Great. The second and last node that we'll delve into for Animate Diff Evolved is Uniform Context Options. This node consists of the following entries. Context Length, which indicates how large the window in which Animated Diff can compose the animation is. The larger the window, the more RAM it will require, and the longer the animation will be coherent. Another peculiarity of Evolved is that, unlike the classic node that can go up to 16 frames, here the author has managed to push the context length to 32. Context Stride, which identifies how often a sampling operation will be performed, I usually leave it at 1. Context Overlap, which indicates how many frames from the previous context block will be used at the beginning of the next context block to ensure that the animation remains coherent. Context Scheduler, which for now can only be set to uniform. Closed Loop, which indicates if we want to make the video a closed loop. For the control net section, I opted to use a line art model as it helps consistently preserve the image in the original video, but I applied it only to half of the output. Now let's move on to the bottom part uh, where I applied a technique seen in a video on YouTube. I'll leave the link in the description uh, this is one of the many possible ways to create an automatic mask for a character in an image, or in this case, in a video, isolating it from the external environment to preserve the latter from changes. Uh, everything is combined by the via yin code for in painting, and then passed to the usual um, case sampler, which has the necessary values to allow LCM to do its job. Finally, we have a face swap with Reactor and a face that I created earlier with SDXL and a frame interpolator to achieve a decent frame rate. In the end, everything will be saved and compiled by save video. Perfect. Let's start our workflow and see the result. As you can see, the video has maintained excellent coherence and the original background despite changing many details of the subject remains consistent. And that's all for today. I hope, as always, that this video has been useful to you. As I mentioned in the next video, we will also discuss the generation of animations using animated if only. In the meantime, you can find this workflow in the links in the description. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming. <laughs>